what that problem is. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Um, I'm not sure. It should all be working fine. Let me know if the sound has come back on. Fingers crossed it has done. I've maybe just hit the wrong button and um, muted the mic. It could be possible. Let me just see if we can unmute it and see if I can hear it on here. Hopefully we can. Yeah, there we go. I can better? hear it. There we go. Yeah, it seems as if we're working now. So fingers crossed we are up and running. I'd maybe just hit the wrong button. If the sound does go off throughout, pop a little um, note in the comments for me, please. I'll keep an eye on that. I'm not quite sure where why that has happened but anyway okay then so enough of me rabbiting on i hope you've all got a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a lemonade or something because i feel like today's stamp along is going to be quite a long one so this is going to be what we're going to be creating today okay so we are going to be using the fabulous flower stamps we are going to be using the beautiful foliage as well we're going to be using lots of different techniques on here and we are going to be using all sorts oh i can see chris is watching chris says he can hear me that's always good okay then so you can see how everything's going to come together perfectly on this card we're going to be using paper pads we're going to be using embossing powders we're going to be using sparkling glitters as well there's going to be all sorts going on so this is where we are aiming for a date now the project that I'm going to make, I'm going to use slightly different colours to what I've used on the finished samples. So it's still from the same paper pad, but I'm going for more purpley colours instead. Okay then, so um, I'm going to just pop the little blog along the bottom of the page. So if you haven't done so already, hop onto this website here, which is chloe'screativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news. And you'll be able to go onto there and if you click on stamp along number three, when you go on there and scroll down, there is a free download and you can go along and download the instructions for the stamp along. There's also a full list of materials on there, everything that you're going to need. And I've linked all the products as well on the website if you would like to buy any of them, if you haven't already got them at home. Um, if you have already got them at home, that is fabulous. If you haven't, of course, you can substitute with anything that you've maybe already got. That's the whole idea of these stamp alongs. We're giving you all of the ideas and the inspiration and teaching you the techniques. But you can obviously use the same products that I'm using if you want to or if you want to put your own twist on it and maybe use some of the products that you've already got at home of course you can do as well. So we are I hope that we are all going um the hope we're all going good. Betty Bliss can't hear me. Well it's looking like the sound is on on my um the little thing next to me here so hopefully the sound should come back for you. Um, I'm so pleased that everyone's joining me. Oh, Anne's joined me from Australia. How fabulous. We are international today. That is brilliant. Thank you so, so much for all of your comments as well. Just while you're all building and joining us. Um, obviously, these we, we do these Facebook Lives at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday. If you can't join us live or maybe you don't want to craft along live, I know that I craft particularly fast. Um, but this is just my normal face. Anyone who comes in the shop on a Wednesday will tell you that if they've seen, seen me crafting. This is just my normal crafting pace. So if I'm going a little bit quick or anything like that, what we do is we post the video onto the page after we've finished the live. And then I also download the video and put it onto YouTube as well. So if you sign up to our email newsletter on chloe'screativecards.co.uk, I'll pop the website up there for you. You'll be able to go onto the website and download the, um, um, sign up to the newsletter sorry and then we'll send you an email when the video is all up on youtube and everything so then you can catch up with your own time if you want to pause me if you want to mute me of course you can do as well so yes that's what we do with those okay then so should we get started oh i'm hitting the wrong button here there we go we'll take that out you can tell i'm getting all very technical now with my um with the graphics card yeah <gasps> don't know how to take that one out that one will just have to stay in. i've got no idea okay then so we're going to get started so if you haven't done so already and been on the website we're going to be using the fabulous flower stamp to create the flowers on here we are also going to be using the for the fabulous foliage stamp as well we're going to be using one of the sentiments as well so the one that i've chosen is have a lovely day we're going to be using some mirror card we're going to be using the six by six designer paper pad as well for our background and also for stamping our flowers on too and we're going to be using an embossing folder as well i don't know if i bring this in really close it's quite subtle the detail from the embossing folder but it's actually behind the flowers but it does make a difference so that's what we're going to be using we're going to be using some bling stones as well the finished card size is eight by eight and um, so if if you want to make this smaller of course you could do you could just put less flowers on less mats and layers and things like that or if you want to go to town like i have 
you can you can make it eight by eight okay then so we're going to get started i'm going to flip the camera around because as you can see i've got another camera set up next to me here um, and we'll get started so i'm going to just pop this one onto here like so there we go and we'll get going so we're going to take our um paper pad to start with so i'm using the six by six um designer paper pad the card that i've that I actually made as the finished sample if i bring this one in you can see i've used kind of more pinky and orangey papers with this one okay with the one that i'm making today i'm going to use i'm going to use the same mats and layer colors but i'm going to use the more pinky purple papers just for a change and to show you how you can change these up and do them a little bit differently as well of course, if you have got any of your beautiful panned papers at home and you want to be using any of those, you can do as well. So what I've done is I've taken my stamps and our stamps are all clear photo polymer, so they're just going to self clean onto your acrylic block. Now, I noticed in the Facebook group, the Stamps by Chloe group, there's been a few questions about how to wash your stamps. Please do not go anywhere near your stamps with anything that contains acetone, alcohol, anything like that because what's going to happen is it's going to damage the stamp and over time you will find that the polymer on the stamp starts to degrade. So what we always recommend is you just take your stamps, chuck them in some warm soapy water, a little bit of fairy liquid, give them a wash in that, then leave them to air dry naturally. What you'll then find is the stickiness then comes back to the stamp and they'll just cling straight back onto your acrylic block. Our stamps are photopolymers, so they're designed to absorb ink as well. So what that means is they will discolour over time, they will absorb the ink and take a little bit of staining, but that is completely normal. Um, it, it'll, the stamps will still work absolutely perfectly. Okay then, so we're going to get started. So we've got our paper pad here. I'm going to take my anti-static bag and just give it a very light dust over okay then i'm going to take my wow embossing ink pad so this is the one that i'm using the wow clear embossing ink pad i love it it is absolutely brilliant and um, you can use it in lots of different ways you can use it for stamping and embossing you can edge your card with it and then cover it in embossing powder and heat it up and you can use it for mixed media as well it is fab but what i sometimes like to do as well is and it is particularly hot in my craft room today i have to say it the sun is shining in the northeast it is fabulous um, is they do a little reinker. So this is called the um, Ink Pad Refill Conditioner and Freestyle Tool. A little bit of a mouthful there, but it works so so well. Um, as it just kind of um, reinks and refreshes your ink pad. But it's got a rollable application tool. So what that means is when you roll over, you're never going to apply too much ink. Okay then. So we're going to just roll this over. Like so. I can see there's a couple of questions coming in already. So there's one from Charlene. Would this card need to be sent in a card box? And if so, do you have any measurements for this? Um, no, I don't have any measurements for it because I haven't actually made a box for this card. But as it's 8 by 8 if you wanted it to be like a one, in one inch deep box, you'd have to have two inches on either side, wouldn't you? So if you did a 10 by 10 inch piece of card and scored an inch either side, that would make an 8 by 8 box, I think. I'm pretty sure that would be right, but um, yes, do double check that one before you make any boxes. Okay then, so what I'm going to do is take my ink pad and I'm going to ink up my stamp. So lots of light tapping. I've actually put all three flowers onto my acrylic block at once. And I've actually treated, treated my stamps and the acrylic block to the luxury of I've given them a little wash before we started today. So there we go. Okay then, so we've inked those up with a clear embossing ink pad. And then we are going to take a little bit of scrap paper, ready to pop our embossing powder over. Okay, just going to move these tapes out of the way because I don't really need them. Right, so we're going to be using opaque bright white, super fine for our embossing powder. This is a game from WOW. It is absolutely fabulous. It is a plain white embossing ink pad, but it's nice and shiny as well when it heats up, but it's really nice and super fine. So it's going to grab any of the detail on the stamp there. So we're going to ink our stamp up. Then we're going to hover over on our paper and press. So you want firm, even pressure all over the stamp. And what I sometimes tend to find with pat patterned papers is, and I've been using these a lot recently, um, you can find that the ink kind of absorbs into them quite quickly. And I think it must be part of the printing process and to do with the ink. So I tend to just stamp one image, chuck my powder on and then heat it up and stamp my next one rather than kind of doing a batch and putting the powder on at once. So can you see there how we've got the flowers nicely stamped? Okay, so we're going to do this. We are going to do 
two of each size and then we're going to do the two large ones okay so we're going to do this technique again so i'm going to heat this up just using my heat gun in two seconds there we go so i'm just holding my heat gun still and then as soon as that powder starts to melt and change we're just moving the heat gun over the image like so. Okay, so you can see how this is all starting to come together. And there we go. And that's that all nicely heated up there. I'm going to take another piece of paper and do exactly the same again. So again, this is just from the 6x6 paper pad that we're using. We're going to re-ink our flowers. Now, normally, I do start with a little bit of matting and layering in these stampalongs, but I'm getting straight in there now. We're on stampalong three, and we're going to start off with the stamping because we're going to do a little bit of glittering, and we just need to give it a little bit of time to dry. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this one down. And you can kind of, this is what I love about clear stamps as well. I'm going to go off on a tangent now. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, how we can position them on the paper so can you see how we've like got more purple on this side of the paper and this side's a little bit more blue so you can kind of really decide where you want those flowers to be so i'm going to put my gonna go gonna go there okay and then press so again firm even pressure all over the stamp and i'm going to lift that off and we're going to take our white embossing powder again and sprinkle this over so we're just going to sprinkle this all over the image. It's like magic every time as well, isn't it? Embossing, I love it. Tend to give it a little flick as well. It just sometimes helps get a little bit of excess off there too. Okay then. So that's going to go straight back into the jar. And then we're going to heat this up again. So we're just holding that heat gun still and then as soon as that embossing powder starts to melt and change we're just moving that heat gun over the image like so okay, i'm just going to turn this round just so i can see how we so i don't burn my fingers um, with the heat gun we really don't want to do that <laughs> okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the two smaller stamps from the plate i'm going to take these two away i'll put them out the way up there and then we're going to ink up just the large one and we're going to stamp another two of these and i'm going to just do it in the little gap that we're serving on paper here okay so i'm going to Position this down and because we're stamping with clear stamps as well you can really see exactly where you're stamping with these so that's that one powder on take off the excess just a bit there there we go heat that up so you can just start to see when that powder starts to melt and change how fabulous this then looks Okay, and I love the effect that you get against the watercolour paper from the 6x6 designer paper pad and the white embossing powder, it just looks so, so pretty and it really gives it a nice little pop and a, and a nice pop of colour. I'm quite into this look at the moment, like watercolour effects, I think it's fabulous. Oh, when you see what we've been working on as well in the background, oh, in for a treat, the next release, it's fabulous. So, we're going to re-ink our stamp. I'm going to stamp down again okay and we're going to place that down and press so we want firm even pressure all over the stamp oh again is enjoying this tutorial that's good she was a bit nervous about doing the flowers well hopefully by the end of this um you'll be a flower expert i'm sure you will i think sometimes you know it's just having the confidence to have a go and do you know what if it doesn't quite work out how you want it's only it's just a piece of paper at the end of the day you can always stamp another one and and do it again and i think that's the thing sometimes okay then so we're going to heat this up again we're holding that heat gun still we should all be embossing experts now i think 
and then we're just going to run the heat gun over the image like so okay so that's those all nicely heated up now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring my glitter in so we're using frozen from the sparklicious um range and this is a gorgeous color i'm going to bring it in it's got all different colors in there can you see it it's like got um iridescence in there it's got silvers it's got a hologram it is absolutely beautiful okay so we're going to bring this in and we're going to use a little bit of the dry clear glue i've got like three bottles of this on the go at the moment rather than just one so hopefully this is the one that's not blocked okay and what we're going to do is just go in and on the ends of the little where the flower is can you see that i'm just putting little dots of glue on all of those okay now obviously the less glue you put on the quicker it's going to dry if you put more glue on it's going to take a little bit longer to dry so i'm going to try and be a little bit more frugal with my glue but i'm going to put them on the windowsill next to me and hopefully by the time that we come to cutting out these will be dry because it is a very very hot day today i have to say okay so we're going to sprinkle that over and then can you just see the effect that that then gives on the flowers how you've got that little bit of sparkle in the middle there so when that dries it will dry down a little bit um flatter and not quite as 3d but it'll look absolutely beautiful okay and you'll also get a little bit of the color shining through from underneath as well so we'll just continue around might be brave and do the full sheet of these to be honest because it won't take too long just to put the little dots on again i'm not being too precise either i'm kind of putting the dots just about on the ends it's not you don't have to be perfect with it just as long as you've got your dots on there okay so we're just working round like so adding these little dots of glue in and this makes such a big difference to your flowers as well when you make them up but to be honest i think the fabulous flower stamp even looks beautiful just made up just flat as well it's such a lovely lovely image it works so so well so we're going to take the glitter again and just sprinkle this over i've got the window open in my craft room as well i was thinking this could be a bit of a risky thing but i don't think we've got too much of a breeze today so it's not too bad so I'm just moving my flowers out the way now to dry and we're going to do the other page okay like so so I'm just working around hopefully you can see that there adding in my little dots of glue you can see how fabulous this is then looking okay when we get the glitter on there and it all starts to come together it makes such a huge difference okay then so we're just going to work around adding these little dots onto here i do keep glancing up at the comments as well as we're going so if you've got any questions pop them in there and i do tend to go on after the facebook as well just to answer any questions that you may have okay so we're just working around adding these little dots in onto the ends of the flowers like so i'm going to do the same on this one and then i'm just going to chuck my glitter over the page this one there there we go i find it quite therapeutic doing the glittering there we go so you can see how we've got all of that bling and sparkle popped onto there as well okay then so i'm going to pop that to one side um Glynis is asking this is a lovely stamp what do you do, do lovely stamp what stamp did you use so this is the fabulous flower stamp she's also asking she's never used embossing powders before could she use a hair dryer instead of a heat gun i'm afraid you can't use a hair dryer yet because what will happen is you'll pop it onto the embossing powder and it's like got too much blow and not enough heat so what you'll find is you'll put it on and it'll just blow the powder off but it's not actually hot enough to heat it so you do really need a heat gun because it's got less blow and more heat to it okay then i'm going to pop this to one side so then they're nicely out of the way and drying okay and i'm not going to kind of muck them up and we're going to do a little bit of heat embossing onto acetate now and i know that this is what lots of you have been waiting for okay heat embossing onto acetate but honestly it's so easy it is so so easy to do so we're going to start with that now 
one up here. I'm just going to give my little craft mat a little dust just to get rid of any of the glitter. I've just kind of dusted that onto myself there. That wasn't really very logical, but never mind. Okay then. So we're going to take some heat resist resistant acetate now, which guess what? We have got back in stock on the website. How exciting is that? So hop over to chloe'screativecards.co.uk and you will find this on the website. Okay, so it's really important that you take your anti-static bag. I tend to give it like a few little pounds on the acetate like this and then I just rub it over and make sure that you've got plenty of anti-static on the acetate. You don't want too much on there though because if you have too much on, what you'll find is that anti-static clings to where your embossing powder should be and we don't want that. So what we're going to do, now if you're confident, that's fine. Go for it and do it the way I'm doing it. If you're not as confident, Stamp each flower individually and you'll probably find that a little bit easier. Okay then, so we're going to pop this one onto here. Just position these back on our block so we're just going to get them all nicely lined up like so. Okay. And what we're then going to do, now if you're handling your stamps and they've got clear embossing ink on, give your hands a little wipe over on a cloth or something before you start with the acetate okay we're going to take our clear embossing ink pad in again now this is where i'd say it's quite important to make sure that you've got enough ink in your embossing ink pad okay so if you're not sure give your ink pad a little re-ink um, and you'll find that a little bit easier for stamping with and i also find the wow embossing ink pad easier for stamping onto acetate because it's kind of more sticky so it tends to stick to the acetate better so i personally tend to find i don't tend to slide as much with this one but it's really easy to do. Okay then, so we're going to ink up our stamp. So lots of tapping all over, exactly as you normally would for on paper or card. Okay. Then you're going to bring your acetate in. Now, it depends on how you're most confident stamping. I personally like to stamp like this. I just find it easier and I find it easier for my hands as well. I'm going to place my stamps down and press. Now, as you notice, I'm keeping one hand on the stamp all the time and using my other hand to press. So that's keeping my stamp nice and still on the acetate. And when we lift that off and put our embossing powder over, hopefully, after I've just told everyone how to do it, this is going to work perfectly, which it has. Okay, so you can see how I've put my embossing powder over there and we've got those beautiful flowers. Now, when you put your embossing powder on, sometimes it might cling a little bit, like it has done there. Just give it a little flick and it'll just get rid of any excess. Okay, I'm going to put this embossing powder back into the, pot, into the pot as well. It's really important with wow powders too, and I always forget to mention this, that you keep them in the little jars they come in because these little jars have been treated for anti-static. So what that means is when you're using these on your paper, your card or on your acetate, you're going to get less stray flex and less static in the powder. So if you keep them in these pots, that is the absolute best thing to do. Please don't decamp them into your larger jars like you do with your glitters. Keep them in the little jars that they come in. Okay, so we're going to heat this up now. Now what you'll find is on acetate, your embossing powder is going to turn super, super quickly. So I always tend to heat acetate in the air like this as well. And I just tend to find the heat goes through it a little bit quicker this way. So you can see how those have then all nicely heated up. Okay, so you can see how we've got those beautiful flowers in there now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need one more large one. So I'm going to dust these off and I'm going to take my one large flower. Okay, I'll just take those off my blocks. The blocks that I'm using as well are the stamp and stash blocks which we've got on the website now and these are great because they're nice and thin so if you struggle with um, stamping or getting the right amount of pressure on these make a massive difference okay so I'm going to stamp that one down there so I've re-inked my stamp I've re-dusted my acetate I'm stamping that down and then I'm going to take the wow up it bright white again just seeing a question come in from Anne can I ask when I used the acetate, I found I had trouble getting the powder stick to the image. Right. So if you're having trouble getting the embossing powder sticking to the image, it might be that you've used too much anti-static 
And then when you're picking your acetate up, the anti-static's clinging to where your ink is, so your powder then can't stick because something's already on there, if that makes sense. Um, or it can be the ink pad's a little bit dry as well, or you just haven't got enough ink on your stamp. Okay, so Gaina says that hers always seems to be thick and clumpy. Okay, if it's thick and clumpy, you're probably sliding on your acetate. So again, keep one hand on the stamp. You don't need quite as much pressure on acetate as you do when you're stamping on paper and card. And if it's coming and you're getting thicker lines, you're probably sliding. Okay, so you can see how I've got my flowers all nice and embossed there on the acetate. Okay, let me just have a little... A little read through the comments here. Gain is asking if you've got the matching dies to the stamps, would you stamp or die cut first? Personal preference. What you will find though is if you stamp and emboss first, then put your die over the top, and um, you will find that you'll get some embossing powder cracking off in the die cutting machine. So in that case, it's sometimes easier to die cut and then stamp. But we are actually going to do that in next week's stamp along. So join me for that one and we'll be going through that in more detail. Um Susan's asking, do you heat acetate from above or below i heat everything from above to be honest i don't tend to heat it from below and um, because when you heat from below you're having to heat the oh you've gotten the right shot of my hand there you're having to heat the the paper to heat the embossing powder whereas if you heat it from above you're just heating the embossing powder directly so that makes a little bit more sense to me and um, diane's asking will you be posting out to you by the time the next release comes out uh, Diane we really we really can't say obviously we kind of are in lockdown restrictions at the moment in the UK so it very much depends on what the situation is then and um, so we, we can't we can't give a date at the moment I'm afraid right then so while we're on a roll with the heat resistant acetate actually we're not going to I'm going to trim these out roughly first I'm just thinking logically how if we do this to try and get it all finished so it's dry to assemble at the end okay so I'm going to use my scissors, I'm going to roughly cut around the edge of those, okay, so I've got my flowers kind of cut out but all still together. And what we're then going to do is take our dries clear glue again, so it's this one, our glitter dries clear glue, and we're going to go in, and I'm working on the top of the acetate, so this is the side that we've embossed, and then we're going to take our glue, little dots on the end again, And just work around adding these little dots of glue onto the flowers like so and then we're going to take our frozen sparklicious glitter again we're going to sprinkle this over like so okay and we're just going to work around adding the little dots of glue onto here like so sorry i'm going really quiet now <laughs> really quiet now as i'm concentrating when i do this so you can just roughly work around adding your glue in like so okay and then i'm gonna again put this to one side and hopefully it'll be dry by the time we get towards the end to start and assemble this i'm just sprinkling my glitter over and you can see how we've got the little bits of glitter just on the stamens of the flowers there okay so i'm going to put this one to the side there and see that Carla's asking, will you be able to ship to the USA soon? Again, it's the same as Europe. We are in a lockdown situation at the moment, so it very much depends on when the circumstances change here. Of, of course, when they do, we'll be emailing everyone and letting everybody know, but I'm afraid this one really is um, beyond our control, to be honest. Okay then. So, just having a little tidy up there, dusting my glitter off. Right, while we're on a roll with the heat resistant acetate, I think we might do our foliage as well. I'm just having a little read to see if there's any more comments. Louise is asking when's the next release out. Keep an eye on the page, Louise. You'll find out very, very soon. Okay then. I'm so pleased that you're enjoying the stamp alongs. That is brilliant news. Um the tip on the 
glue bottle is a universal tip. I, we can't guarantee it'll fit on every bottle because it's um, it's sized to fit on this one. So if you are buying the tip, I personally would recommend that you go for the Arc Glitter Dries Clear Glue as well. And the reason for that is this glue is designed to flow through the tip. So it, it's a slightly, it's a really strong adhesive, but it's a slightly thinner consistency. So you get a much better flow through the tip. So you get a little bit more control when you are gluing and glittering. Okay then, so we are going to take our heat resistant acetate back in, okay, and we are going to take our foliage stamp. So I'm going to start with the largest one, which is from the Everyday Foliage. I'm going to be embossing this in the Dazzling Lilac Wow Embossing Powder. This is a gorgeous colour, it's a very pale lilac colour, but it's got a holographic sparkle in there, so it is really, really pretty. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to stamp and emboss these so i'm just going to count up how many i've got on this card so i've got one two three four five so we're going to stamp and emboss five of these on the heat resistant acetate so again i'm taking my little anti-static bag giving it a good dust over okay and then we're going to ink up our stamp so we're going to use our clear embossing ink pad again the wow clear embossing ink pad which is brilliant for um Power stamp. And then we're going to place that down onto our card and press. So you want firm even pressure all over the stamp. Now with this stamp it is very very detailed. So what you might find is when you're stamping onto acetate you might lose a little bit of the detail and that's absolutely normal and the reason for that is um, the when you heat the embossing powder it's going to expand slightly so you might lose a few of the lines but again it still looks equally as beautiful when it all embosses so we're just going to continue around stamping these so i kind of just stamp them on my page where i kind of see oh i think i might have smudged that one a little bit maybe it's a tiny bit hopefully not okay so i'm going to stamp another one here and i'm kind of batching batching these ones in. I hope I haven't overlapped that one there. Okay, this is like how I craft at home. I try and cram as many on a sheet as possible. I think three is going to be the limit, but we'll keep that extra bit for the smaller leaves. Okay, I cannot be the only one that ends up with a bag of just tiny pieces of heat resistant acetate that I've kind of just held on to because it'll come in for something, you know, like a leaf or a butterfly one day. <laughs> I'm terrible for it. So we're going to put that back into the jar again. Okay, and we're going to heat those three up and then we need to do another two after that. So we'll grab our heat gun back in. And this stamp that I'm using is from the Fabulous Foliage stamp and you can see how quickly that, acid, that um, embossing powder is heating on the acetate. But can you see how it's got like, this embossing powder is beautiful. It's got like a lovely pearlescent sheen to it. It looks gorgeous on the vellum as well. This one's dazzling lilac that we're using. Such a pretty, pretty colour. I love it. I think this is the thing sometimes as well when you go back to colours that you haven't used for a little while. It's really nice, isn't it? To kind of put a fresh twist on them and use them with some different stamps. You just look absolutely gorgeous. So you can see there how we've got these fabulous glittery leaves. Can you see? Can you? Are we picking the glitter up there on the camera or not? I'm not sure. But I can assure you they are very nice and sparkly in the flesh. Okay, so I'm going to pop that one to one side. I'm going to stamp another two on just some more heat resistant acetate. Okay then. So we're going to ink the, uh, not ink, sorry, anti-static this first again so a few little dots for your anti-static bag and then rub it over your acetate okay and then we're going to take our stamping now another little tip as well when you're stamping on acetate or stamping onto anything in fact please don't put your stamp on top of whatever you're stamping on to ink it up because i've seen it happen so many times and when when you do that you can be putting ink onto your surface as well which can cause you to get smudges so always never stamp on uh, ink up on the paper that you're using or your acetate or whatever okay so we're going to ink that up i'm going to stamp one here going to re-ink it up again so i'm 
always re-inking as well. I, that's what I tend to do anyway when I'm using clear embossing ink. And then I'm stamping another one there. Okay. Then we're going to lift that off. And we are going to cover this with our fabulous Dazzling Lilac Embossing Powder. I'm obsessed with this colour. It's just absolutely beautiful. You're going to see a flurry now of lilac cards, I feel going under Facebook because I feel like this is going to be the one I'm using a lot okay so that's gone into there and then we're going to heat this up again so I'm going to use my heat gun now if you get any fingerprints like that or anything like that on your acetate you can just wipe them off but to be honest with you because we're cutting them out I don't tend to bother I just tend to leave them So again, I'm just going in with my heat gun. Like so, and they're all nicely heated up now. So you can see it turns quite quickly on here. Okay, and then we'll pop that over here. And I'm going to bring in that other little bit where we had the space across the bottom here. So we're going to stamp the small foliage and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five of those. So this is our little foliage stamp. So again, this comes in the fabulous foliage stamp collection from the Stamps by Chloe range. Okay, and we are going to ink this up. So again, I'm not inking up on top of my acetate, I'm inking up on my mat there. And we're just going to stamp these. So I'm going to go one there. Two. And if I slid a little bit there, maybe a little bit slidey that one, but it's fine, we can salvage it. Three, re ink again, four, and then will I get five on there? Maybe pushing me luck a bit right now. I'm going to put my embossing powder on and then decide. So this time we're going to stamp the we're going to emboss the smaller ones in the opaque bright white super fine. So this is the plain white embossing powder. Oh look at that! I've missed a little bit there. But do you know what? That's fine. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to show you how you can get away with that on your finished card. Okay. So I'm going to heat that up now. I'm going to. I've done a tiny little bit of press and I've got a few of these already stamped so rather than stamping and embossing one more to make the five I'm just going to use the one that I've got over here that's already stamped okay so you can see how nicely they have stamped and embossed so you need five of those smaller ones okay Sean is asking is that a special type of acetate yes it is a um it's a heat resistant acetate that I'm using so what that means is you can heat it and it won't melt whereas the other acetates um, and like a normal acetate when you put heat on it will just shrivel up and melt so it needs to be heat resistant I can see there was an, somebody else asking about what I'm using so I'm going to pop the link to the blog across the bottom of the screen okay there we go you need to go on to there Chloe's creative cards .co .uk forward slash blogs forward slash news and if you click onto there you will see that there is a um a, a full write-up of this craft along you can download a free set of pdf instructions and you can also go onto there and see exactly what materials i've used and i've linked them all on the website too and what we'll do with this video after we've finished is i'll pop it onto the page and i'll also put it onto youtube as well so then you can catch up any time just gonna have a little drink there I feel like I'm talking loads okay then so while we've got all of our flowers all of our stamping everything on the go over here I'm, I'm, I'm directing as well as I'm here showing you where it is but you, you can't see that because you can only see my craft mat I've just realized that so while we've got all that going on over there we're going to get on with our matting and layering while we're waiting for those bits and pieces to dry ready to assemble okay then so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give my little mat a little dust just to start with just to tidy up a little bit okay let's put 
those out the way up there okay then so what we're going to do now is bring in our mats and layers so i've got mine over here and we're going to start off with our big piece of mirror card so this is cut down to seven and three quarter inches square now it's personal preference how you make your cards you can make them with the fold at the top so they stand like this which is how i tend to make mine because I, if I'm actually sending this to someone, I tend to decorate the inside. Actually, on that note as well, um, what we're doing at the moment is we are randomly selecting orders that are placed on the website. And if you place an order, you get a, you've got a chance of winning one of these cards from the craft alongs. So what we're doing is um, we're just randomly picking orders and popping cards in with them. So you never know, you might get an extra little surprise in with your online order. So you can either create your card so it stands up with the fold at the top like so or you can use it so it stands up with the fold at the side it is completely up to you my personal preference is to make them that way so that's how i tend to do it okay then so what we're going to do now is we are going to take our mirror card and just stick this down to start with so a little bit of glue just on the back of here and i'm just sticking this down flat again i'm just using my art glitter dries clear glue it looks like i'm putting loads on but actually I'm not, I'm only putting a tiny, tiny amount on because I've got that metal tip on there and you can hear how it's just scratching the surface of the card there. So I'm only putting a small amount on there. Okay, so we're going to pop that onto here. Just stick that down flat. I'm not the best person at getting my mat and layering straight. So I do like to use wet glue then I've got a little bit of time to manoeuvre it round. So then you've got your white card, which is cut down to seven and three quarter inches, uh, seven and a half inches square, sorry. And again, if you go onto the website here, this way, chloe'screativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news, you'll be able to go onto there and all of the measurements for your matting and layering are on there as well. So if you want to craft along, please do go and download the sheet. I'm going to take that out, put the little the little corner back in there. Okay then, so I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper now. Okay, and we are going to take um, our piece of card and we're going to take a chisel tip glue pen. So I've got one here. Now these glue pens, when they first arrive to you, the tip will be white. What you need to do is pump them through so you get the blue glue coming through, like what I've got now, and the tip will go blue. Okay, what we're going to do is take this and we're going to drag it along the edge of the card, like so. So I'm holding it like about a 45 degree angle and then dragging it towards me. If you drag it towards you, you'll find that'll keep the edge nice and straight. Okay, and we are going to pop a little bit of glitter just on the edge here as well. So I'm using Crystallina glitter to glitter the edge. Okay, and can you just see how that adds just a little bit of sparkle there? Okay, so we're going to do that along all four edges. And you'll see that I do this on so many of my cards. So again, just dragging it along. You don't need to do the whole pressing thing every time. It's just mine's a little bit dry. It's a bit of an old chisel tip. But we have eventually got some back in stock on the website. They arrived yesterday. So if you need a new one, definitely hop on over. We've been waiting for ages for those to come back in stock. Okay, so you can see how we've got that lovely little glittery edge around the side there. So then we're going to glue this flat onto our card, like so. So again, just a little bit of the dry clear glue. And that's going to go down onto there. Okay, so you can see how our mats and layers are coming nicely together now. Now the next one's caused a little bit of confusion, I think. So, what I said is you're going to need four of your little squares of your patterned paper cut down. Now I can't remember off the top of my head what size these needed to be cut to. But basically you needed four of those cut down and then we're going to mat them onto some mirror card. Okay, but I didn't give you a measurement for the mirror card because we're going to do it during the craft the stamp along. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our little squares that I've already got cut to size and I'm going to edge them all first with the chisel tip glue pen. So I might be here a little while doing this, but we're just going to drag down the side, just give 
my little pot of shimmy there and then just dunk them in. So this is just crystalline glitter that I'm using. Let's just go along the edge of these here. That's one done. And again, by dragging towards you, that's going to mean that that line's nice and straight. So you can just work your way along like that. And because it's crystalline glitter, it's going to allow the colour from underneath from the paper to shine through. Okay, we're just going to work our way around like so. here I'm just covering it with the sparklicious glitter like so okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to mat and layer these up so we're going to take um, a little bit of um, mirror card to do this I'm going to just move that bit of scrap paper out the way and I'm going to grab my glitter in I'm also just going to quickly grab some foam pads which I've somehow managed to throw off my craft desk so just give me a moment and I'll just grab these in go okay right then so what we're going to do is map these onto our mirror card now so i've got a piece here that's just ready to cut to size so what i tend to do is just stick one into place and because we only want a very fine border with the mirror card if i bring that in nice and close Can you see i've only got a very very fine border on there yep yeah, so what i tend to do is when i'm doing very very fine borders like this i tend to just trim them on my guillotine by eye So, and then you know it's going in take a little bit fraction more off so can you see how there's just a very very fine mirror board around the edge but then when you put these onto here it's just going to make them ping and pop okay so i'm going to do exactly the same with the other ones here so you can as leave as much or as little of a border as you like and by using the wet glue as well we just gluing that into place but it's giving me that time to kind of maneuver it around a little bit as well the one thing i would say with pva glue is just make sure that you're only using a very very small amount on your projects because it is a water-based wet glue so if you use too much what you'll find is it'll wrinkle your paper or card okay so we're going to put a little bit more glue on here So and get that into place. Can't work that way, I'm very strange. So we can just start to trim this down, like so. So you can see how these are starting to come together now. Okay, and then we're just going to keep going and we're going to just pop this one under here. like so and just keep matting and layering these up uh, nicely so we've got our four squares then all matted onto your mirror card like so okay so you, you can see how that's all nicely starting to come together Okay, so we're going to pop those onto our card, and to do that, we're going to use foam pads. Now, I do tend to use a lot of foam pads when I start sticking things together, so you can use as many or as few as you like. But what I would always recommend is you pop one in the middle, 
to stop it from sagging. Okay, so we'll pop these under here, like so. Okay then, so before we kind of stick these down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roughly position them on my card where I think they're, go they're going to go. Okay, so that looks quite good to me there. So now I'm going to start and take the backs off and stick these down. Okay, so we're going to pop that one around about there. So we're just leaving like a little white border around the edge and then we're going to leave a little white gap between the squares as well. So this is where using your 6 by 6 papers to make larger projects comes in. So I don't know about everyone at home, but... If you, can, if you could see the paper stack behind me, actually I put some on the Insta story this morning so you'll have to have a, a little look on there on the Instagram. Um, but yeah, I'm such a paper hoarder. I've got them literally, paper pads, I'm surrounded by them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just mat and layer these up. Like so. Okay, and then you can just see how that then all starts to come together. So that's our little mats and layers all done there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is build up our center panel. So we are gonna take in our um, squares of white card and mirror card. So we're gonna take in the first square of white to start with, and we are going to take our chisel tip glue pen. Okay. And we're going to drag this along each edge. So you can see how we've then got that little glittery board around the side. What we're now going to do is take our piece of card. So this is the smaller piece. I think this is cut down to five by five from memory, but please don't quote me on that. It might be five and a half actually. Okay, and we're going to place this inside our embossing folder. So the embossing folder that we're using is the beautiful floral fantasy embossing folder, which we've got on the website as well. So this is a gorgeous design. I actually did a little YouTube video with this earlier in the week so I'll have a little hop over onto YouTube or onto the blog as well and um, because it's such a lovely folder it is really pretty lots of florals on there and the centers are lovely for putting little jewels in as well so if you just want to make some quick and easy cards using embossing folders this would be absolutely amazing okay so we're going to pop this into our embossing folder now I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this and I like to make sure that my embossing is nice and straight so I always line it up with the top of the folder like so okay i'm going to run this through my machine so i'm just going to turn around for a moment and run this through my gemini i'm using a gemini junior okay and see so there's a couple of questions going on about a hair dryer in the comments here a hair dryer will not work for heat embossing at all it's not hot enough so please don't try it because i don't want you to try things and get disheartened because it's not working you really do need a heat gun if you're going to heat emboss okay then so I've quickly run that through my Gemini and look at the pattern that we've got on there. It is, isn't it gorgeous? So, so pretty. It's just crying out for jewels and glitter, isn't it? I absolutely love it. So I'm going to pop this down. I'm going to do our final little bit of matting and layering and then we'll start and build the card up. So we're going to mat this under some pink mirror card. Again, oh, we're not yet. We're going to edge it with, chisel, with a chisel tip glue pen, sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself now. So I'm going to edge that, our chisel tip glue pen, and also our crystallina glitter. Again, I have my glitter in a big tub, um, and you can just kind of dunk it in. Right, so I should get an 8x8 tub, shouldn't I? That'll be really cool. Okay, so I'm just going to work around, covering that, and then we are just going to mat this onto our piece of pink mirror card. 
So I'm going to use my dried clear glue. Oops. Like so. And then we're going to map that onto our mirror card. We're going to stick that into place. I'm going to just... If, I, if my glitter's still wet, I tend to put it under a piece of paper when I'm trying to stick the mats and layers just to smooth it down. So that's nice and flat there now. Okay, and then we are going to use, I'm going to put, for starters, we're going to put our pin back in the top of the glue. That is really important. And I'm going to put the lid on that glitter and move it well out of my way. Okay, so we're going to mat these pieces together and then pop them into the middle of our card. So foam pads straight onto the back of here like so I'm going to put an extra couple in there because it's quite a heavy project that we're making okay then foam pads onto here and then we're going to take the backs off of those and then that's going to go on at a slight angle and the card blank like so I'm going to do the same with this one we're going to mat it on the top and that's going to go under there so that's our basic matting and layering built up so we're going to do a little bit of cutting out now now i know that i am quite a speedy cutter outer um so if you can't keep up with me at home please don't stress now what i found is the sun has definitely worked in my favor today and it has um dried the little the, the glue for me on my flowers if your flowers aren't quite dry please don't rush ahead and kind of ruin your card please do give them chance to dry and just finish this little bit off later so we're going to cut out our flowers to start with now obviously if you've got the dye you could have been die cutting these but i personally quite like fussy cutting and cutting these out so i'm just using my scissors here just to trim these round i'll try moving a little bit closer so i can i can show you what i'm doing it's the first one so again, when I cut out, I always tend to move my paper and not the scissors, and not the scissors, if that makes sense. So what I do is I kind of feed the paper into the scissors like so, and you'll find that a lot easier. And then if you've got a point, if you cut it at one angle, then go in from the other, you'll find you'll get a nice sharp point on your cut. Okay, so I'm just working around like so. that's our next flower all done there now okay i'm going to cut these smaller ones out as well so we're just trimming around i feel like we should have some background music shouldn't we i should try and organize that for next time for when i'm cutting out okay so i'm gonna whiz round with these scissors okay sorry i go really really quiet when i'm um when i'm cutting out i'm noticing there's a few comments about international delivery going into the comments box there we are honestly doing our absolute best to get back to international shipping but at the moment it's just not something that's viable other companies might be doing it but unfortunately we we aren't able to at the moment you know there is me my mum and my dad who are all um working to get the orders out and obviously today i'm here doing the the crafter the stamp along and i've been doing the blog posts and things so at the moment we we we, we can't ship internationally there's a lot of delays as well when parcels are getting to places so we as soon as we can reinstate the international shipping of course we will do 
and if you sign up to the newsletter on our website we'll send you an email to let you know when we're doing that but at the moment it's just not something that we're going to, we're going to be able to do um, until the, the kind of lockdown measures and things are relaxed a little bit here in the UK. Okay, so I'm going to continue cutting out my flowers here. Just working my way around, trimming these out. But can you see how the frozen glitter now is really picking up the colours from around it rather than just being like the silvery colours that it was? Okay, so I'm going to trim these in. Like so, I'm just working round, trimming these out. I always feel like it takes me forever to cut anything out when I'm doing it live like this, when I'm doing a little video or anything. You see, you can spend a little bit more time, you can be a bit more careful than what I'm being. Okay, that's that one done. And then we'll just do another couple of these. And we'll have all of our flowers nicely cut out. Like so. We'll just work around. Okay, trimming these out. And then we'll just do this one here as well. So we're just working round. Like so. Okay, and that's our last little flower all nicely cut out, cut out there. Okay then. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just pop these into two. So we're going two large together, two small, two medium together and two small together. And we're going to start and shape these. So I shape the flowers, lots of people do this in different ways but I tend to just keep it quite simple to be honest. It is so so easy. You're just going to hold the centre of your flower like this between my index finger and my thumb. So I'm holding that in my right hand. Then using my left hand I'm going to use my index finger and my thumb just to curl the petals. And what I'm doing is putting a little bit of pressure at the base of the petal with my thumbnail so you can kind of really lift the petals up a little bit like so. Okay. So you can see how that's then given the flowers some shape but this is really really easy um to do it's not kind of a difficult technique and you don't need any special tools it's really easy so can you see the difference if i put that one on my craft mat there and put the flat one next to it can you just see the difference that that little bit of shaping makes but again it is so so easy to do so we're going to continue around with the next one here Okay, exactly the same technique. I'm going to do this with all of the flowers. Like so. So you can see how that then adds that little bit of shape to them. Okay, and we're going to do the same with the middle size one. So you can just work your way around. But I think what makes the difference is putting your thumbnail at the base here and just kind of putting a little crease in the flower. It just gives them a little bit more shape. And you can be, they're quite robust as well. Um, they, they're not kind of too too um, flimsy or anything. You can be quite kind of rough with them as well when you're shaping them. You don't have to be too careful. But by keeping your finger and thumb in the middle all the time, it stops you from snapping the petals off as well. So we can just work our way through, like so, shaping these all nicely. Okay, and then you can just see how that all comes nicely together there. Okay, so we're going to grab in our acetate flowers now and I'm going to cut these out. So again, this is like the same technique for cutting out, dead, dead easy. To be honest with you, you can be dead lazy with acetate as well if you want to. You don't even have to cut it out properly. You can just roughly nip around the edge because it's on acetate you can't really see anywhere. 
Okay, so we're going to just trim around the edge of here, like so. I love the noise acetate makes when you cut it as well. Such a nice noise. There we go. You can see how we've then got those flowers nicely cut out. Okay, so that's the first one. And then we'll do the next one here. So we can just work around trimming this out. Like so. Okay, that's that one. So the two large ones. So I'm going to trim around the medium one and trim around the small one now. So again, I'm just using my scissors and just trimming around. one and then we'll do exactly the same with the smaller one just trim that round like so okay that one all nicely cut out there now okay so we're going to start and shape these up a little bit so what we're going to do is take the larger ones to start with so this is the ones on the heat resistant acetate and we are going to bend the petals up like this so can you see how i'm pulling the petal towards me and then squishing it with my finger but i'm being quite rough with them you don't have to be too gentle okay and then if you squish them together like this at the end gives the shape to the acetate like so so that's like your flat one and that's the one I've shaped you can really see the difference but when it cut when it calms down that's not the right word <laughs> when it kind of settles down a little bit and starts to open out a little bit more it looks really beautiful so it might look like you've, you've gone a little bit too far to start with but don't panic when it settles it looks beautiful now what you might sometimes find as well with your acetate is some of the embossing powder might crack off when you fold it like this I honestly don't tend to worry about that you can see mine's cracked a little bit in the middle there but I'm going to put a jewel over the top anyway so that that doesn't worry me at all we're going to just walk uh, uh, not walk we're going to just work around the flower like so okay and then just pull those petals up like this okay and you can see how they are all nicely coming together now so we're just working round and see there's a couple of questions about my scissors they are tonic scissors that i use but i believe that tonic don't actually make them anymore um but i'm sure you can get similar alternatives okay so then you can see how we've got the flowers nicely shaped there so i've got my acetate ones and i've got wouldn't they look nice like that as well actually like little bluebells would that be the right word i don't know obviously in a different color but that would be another way to use the stamp Okay, so we're going to start and layer these up now. So I'm going to use a little bit of 3D glue gel. Okay, and we're going to just start to layer these together. So we're going to pop a blob of glue in the middle. Then we're going to take our second pair of petal and just twist it. So we're popping it on on the offset there. Then we're going to take our acetate flower, pop that in the middle and offset it again. So you can see how beautiful your flowers are then going to look when they dry okay but it's so easy these aren't difficult techniques i'm showing you it's just the way you kind of put them together but it's so so easy to do and because you're using 3d glue gel you can kind of play around with them a little bit as well and get them so that they're in the right place so then i've got some little bling stones put that one in the middle there so then you can see how those flowers look beautiful when they're done. So I'm going to pop that over to one side while we build the other ones up. 
a little bit of glue in the middle a bit of glue on the back of the acetate one layering these all together and then some little jewels so i might as well grab my jewels out while i'm here want another big one and a little one you can tell i've pinched this off another card this <laughs> this jewel i was one shot for the project so i thought i'll have that one <laughs> there we go so you can see how that's coming nicely together now okay that's going to go over there and we're just going to build the medium one up so a little bit of glue on the back of there pop that down a bit of glue on my acetate layer pop that down and a little bit of glue on the back of my bling stone it's going to go into the middle there like so so you can see how they're starting to build up but don't the colors look really gorgeous i think the watercolor paper pad absolutely makes this project okay and i'm gonna pop a little bit of glue just in the middle of here a bit of glue on the back of the acetate one so again i'm using 3d glue gel um, and then i'm going to use a little bit of glue on here as well just on my bling stone again i'm using 3d glue gel so it does take a while for this to dry but it is good stuff okay so you can see this one here june's asking um about the paper question because she lost the feed the purple paper was a handmade can you buy it from the pit from the website if you hop onto our website i'm going to put the blog link up again this one here chloe's creative cards uk forward slash blogs forward slash news it's from the six by six designer paper um, the designer paper pad so you'll be able to it, it gets lots of different colors in there and there's lots of different watercolor effects but if you hop onto the blog there's a link to the product on there okay then so we're going to start and build up our final card now actually we're not because i haven't cut my leaves out have i so we'll chop the leaves out next now when you come to cutting out your leaves this is so quick and easy to do because literally all you're going to do is just trim round not being careful at all leaving a board around the edge you can go as close to the edge as you want to i personally tend to leave quite a bit of border just feed it into my scissors it's that one but you can just trim round so so easily and because it's acetate if you haven't quite trimmed it perfectly nobody is going to know Okay, so that's that one done now what i do like to do when i have time um is i like to do like a little sheet of these leaves and i just like sit for a day and stamp a load emboss them and then cut them out and i keep them in like a little tupperware box because they are so so useful for using behind your flowers and on your different projects and the idea for this came this was years ago i remember it was we did a christmas release it must it was must have been right back in the early days i bet it was about the been when we brought the fir branch or the crystal branch stamp out so when will have that been when it was 2013 or 2014 um i didn't have any dies for my foliage because die cutting back then was quite it was a relatively new thing i can remember when the spellbinders grand caliber first came out and it was like the first a4 die cutting machine and um, so die cutting was very much a new thing when i was back in then so and dies were quite expensive so i didn't actually have many dies myself in my craft box at home so i was looking for a way that i could use my stamps as foliage behind the flowers but without stamping them directly onto the card and that's when i started to use heat resistant acetate because it just works perfectly because it looks like the image is floating so it looks really delicate and really pretty but it's so quick and easy to do and it's just giving your stamps another it's giving your stamps another use really um, and obviously back then when when you were talking like for a swirl die it'll have, it'll have easily been about 15 pounds and um, so to build quite a few of those up in your collection obviously it was a lot of money whereas now um you, you can get dies a little bit easier than you used to be able to okay then so we've got all of our larger foliage leaves out there 
We're going to do exactly the same with the smaller one. So we're just going to trim round like so. And by having the more solid white ones and offsetting them with the purple sparkly ones, it's going to give such a fabulous effect on your finished card. If you're wondering why I keep reaching behind me as well, it's because that's where my bin is. <laughs> so as I'm going, I'm there. Uh, keeping tidy and chucking everything in the bin i can promise you that my craft room does not look like this on a daily basis it uh, was an absolute <laughs> an absolute mess till we started the the live video okay so i'm just trimming around the edge and when i cut these leaves out i don't go right into the center i literally just trim around the edge i don't see the point in stressing about being really neat with your cutting out because you're not going to see it at the end of the day so you can see on the bigger ones how I've just, can you see how I've left it in here? I haven't cut any of that away. Okay. So I'm going to use just our scissors to trim around this one. And if you've got any way you've smudged a bit, you can always just cut it off as well, which is uh, always useful on the heat resistant acetate front. So those are all nice and cut out now so we're going to start and arrange our flowers on all our project now what i always do is i always kind of i always like to lay things out before i stick them down before i kind of commit to sticking them so i'm going to pop that one there i'm going to put a smaller one there and this other smaller one there but you can kind of manipulate your flowers round to get them to how you want them to be for me these are a little bit stuck up at the moment but again once they settle down you can kind of have a little bit more play with shaping them okay so i'm going to position those there blob of glue gel on the back like so e my word i've just seen how long we've been live for with this card it's amazing okay then so we're going to pop that onto there and that's going to go onto there. So I'm using 3D glue gel again to position these. So I'm kind of creating like a little cluster. I'm going to just push them down a little bit actually. Because I'm going to put my sentiment at the top. So we're just creating out a, a little cluster of flowers. A card here. Bit of glue gel here as well. Okay. So if I hold that up now. Can you just see how that's starting to come together but i've left space up here to stick a sentiment on okay so we're going to start and take our foliage now so i tend to lob the bottom off like that then you can get it in a little bit tighter to the flowers so i'm going to put i put glue gel at the bottom as well sorry i'm not telling you what i'm doing here so i put a tiny bit of glue gel on the bottom and then i just stick that bit in there like that chop that bit off there so those are looking rather fabulous tucked away there okay and then we're going to put two at the top as well one there now i always like to make sure that my glue gel is covered by the flowers as well because sometimes you can see it a little bit one over there like so so you can see how that's then nicely starting to build up i'm just going to have a little look at my finished one over here so i can just see so I put a little bit of extra foliage there and a little bit of extra foliage at the top here so to do that all i've done is i've just taken my stamp image and just chopped into it so just chop little pieces off like so okay and you can do exactly the same you can cut this into as many pieces as you like so i've kind of gone into three there quite possibly the hardest color to show you as well this lovely embossing the way that i'm sticking the embossing part the um leaves on is embossing side up okay and i can see there's a couple of comments we do have the glue gel on the website and yeah you could do the flowers on the bellum if you wanted to yeah we've got a i'm planning a stamp along um with vellum actually so hopefully we'll have that one soon okay so then you can kind of just arrange your foliage wherever you feel you need it so i feel like i need a little bit in there just to 
fill the gaps in. And honestly, when you see a card that's got no foliage on compared to a one that's got foliage on, this makes the biggest difference to your projects. So then we're going to take the smaller leaves and start to chuck these in. So I've put one at the bottom in here, behind there, and then one just under there. Like so. And again, because we're using that 3D glue gel, it gives you that little bit of time to kind of just manoeuvre everything into the right place. Okay, and then we're going to push that one in here. This one. And again, you can add as much or as little foliage as you like. I'm going a bit wild with mine at the moment. A little bit in there as well. Okay, so you can see how I've then built up that arrangement in the middle of my card, like so. So we're going to stamp and emboss our sentiment now. Okay. And I'm going to grab, I haven't got my silver embossing out. Oh, that worked out well. I didn't have my silver embossing powder on my desk and it was literally the first one I pulled out of the drawer. That worked very well, didn't it? So, we're going to take some white card. Just going to give my mat a little dust over again. Some white card and we're going to take, uh, I'm going to put the lid on that glue gel for starters. And we're going to take an anti-static bag, we give our card a little dust. We're going to take our Have a Lovely Day stamp, I'm going to just get that a bit straighter on the block. And then we're going to take our clear embossing ink pad, put it ink that up. Again, wow, clear embossing, ultra straw drying ink pad, fabulous for your heat embossing. I'm going to stamp this down, I've been very luxurious with the amount of white card I've given myself to stamp that on, you really only need a little piece. And then we are going to take some metallic silver, super fine embossing powder again from Wow. I'm going to sprinkle that over and then we're going to heat this up. So to do that, I'm going to take my heat gun, hold my heat gun still. As soon as that powder melts from that grey, to a lovely bright silver, I'm going to move that over my um, finish over my pack. Like so. so you can see, this is how you do that. Oh, well, that's better. You can see how that's come together. I'm going to grab my little guillotine in now and just trim this down. just trim my sentiments by eye I don't have a specific size or anything like that in mind I just kind of trim them down to what I think looks right so I'd probably take a fraction more of this one like so so you can see how that is looking now okay and then we are going to not leave it on the guillotine for starters we're going to take our crystallina glitter again and we're going to go all the way around the edge using our glitter like so okay and then we are going to map that onto a little piece of mirror card again I'm going to get rid of all these little bits of paper just before I've got lying round. I'm going to grab in our mirror card and again I'm just going to do this by eye. Let it glue on the back. Like so. That's going to go down into place under the mirror card. Okay, so you can see how good that is then looking. I'm going to just leave a little border around the edge of here. Okay, we're going to work our way around. So we're going to just trim down like so. And then you can see how we've got that lovely little border just around the side. We're going to put that onto our card with a foam pad. Just pop one in the middle there. 
move my guillotine out of the way. Right, we'll get this stuck down onto our card, like so. So you can see how fabulous that project is now looking. Now to finish this off and just to balance it out, I'm going to use some self-adhesive dribbles. I'm just grabbing my pokey table. And I'm just going to put three dribbles into each corner. Three across there as well. I think the little jewels really finish your projects off just by adding these into the corners. Gives it a lovely finished look to your piece. along this way as well it always messes messes with my my head this when you're putting these on i always get confused as to what way i'm putting the jewels on there we go you can see how fab that's then looking i'm going to put three on my sentiment as well top and bottom because we can okay so i'm going to put three going across there So, three along the bottom. And that would then be your finished card, okay? So you can see how that has all come together absolutely beautifully. We've got the fabulous flowers on there. We've got the foliage in the background and we've got that fabulous sentiment on there as well. Now, we did say, if like me, where you've missed, I'm going to point my mistakes out now, look. So you have missed a little bit of embossing there. What you could do if you wanted to, honestly, if you look at that from a distance, you're not going to see it. You're not going to at all because I haven't got it in the shot there. <laughs> but you're not going to see it. But if you want to, you could go in and add some little dots of glue just over your foliage in the background and sprinkle it with a little bit of um, frozen glitter. What I would say is start off lightly because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. And then, um, or you could add little jewels into the background as well. So that is this week's finished stamp along project. So that's the one we've just made. And this is the one that I made as the sample earlier in the week. So you can see how we've got the same card, but in the two different colour combinations. So we've got one that's a little bit more pink and one that is a little bit more lilac. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around so that you can see me now. And I'm a right glittery mess, but never mind. So I hope that you enjoyed that stamp along video um, i know i've probably gone quite fast but that is just how i craft i'm quite a fast crafter and um, so i really hope that you've enjoyed the video i'm going to upload it onto the page once we've finished now and i'll also pop it onto youtube later if you go onto our website which is chloe's creative cards.co.uk you can go at the bottom of the page and you can sign up to the email newsletter so when we have a new blog project when we're doing another stamp along um, when we've got any new product we send you an email out to let you be the first to know if you would like to craft along you can go on to chloe's creative cards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news and you will be able to download the free pdf um, instruction sheet along with all the materials that you are going to need of course if you would like to follow us you can follow us on facebook chloe's creative cards you can follow us on YouTube and I'm updating the YouTube channel. There's a new video going up on Monday actually um, and that's Chloe's Creative Cards. And you can follow us on Instagram. Daily inspiration on Instagram at Chloe's Creative Cards. And hashtag us in your mates as well. So use either the hashtag Stamps by Chloe or hashtag, hashtag Chloe's Creative Cards to get featured on our Instagram story as well. So I really hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along and I cannot wait to see you all again next week. So same time, Wednesday, I do believe it's the 29th next week, is it? 29th of April, I think I've got that right. 29th of April at 2pm, I will be back live on the Facebook page, same time, same place next week and we will be using the butterfly trails on the edge die and I haven't got the card with me so I can't show you but I've kind of planned out the next few stamp alongs, I did that at the weekend so we are all organised so we'll be using the beautiful butterfly trails um, stamps and dies next week and there will be a blog post going up on Friday about that and we'll also be sending an email out about it too so please do hop onto the website and subscribe to the emails again I will let you know when the 
uh, videos up on YouTube and I'll also post it onto the page when we finish today. So thank you so much for joining me. I would absolutely love to see your stamp along inspired makes in the stamps by chloe group so please do get posting them in there because i always feature them um on the thursday morning after the stamp along i always put a few on the page so please do um if you've got any makes that you've, you've stamped along with me today please do pop them in the group and i would love to have a look at them so i hope you've enjoyed that and i will see you all again next week at two o'clock bye